I think I have a new design to test cams for our cam crusher. And I wanna show you what we've got right now and what I think that we can build. What we started with was two plates and, and it was held by the bolts. Now the problem with this is for example, the width between these two bolts, it has to fit in between there. And so having bolts go in all the way through is a problem. Uh, the other thing is it wants to slip. We've had several cam videos. I'll put description, uh, some links in the description of the cam videos where we have the, the cams actually sliding out. You can see this, the skid marks down there. This, uh, these little grooves right here aren't enough to grab uh, the metal. And so this is a pretty simple design. I, I thought it was a good idea, but it just wasn't working. And if we're gonna test smaller gear that people send, uh, it's, it's not working. So we went with this bigger design and Steve came up with this. And again, it has thread going all the way through. And again, that being so big, it's not such a problem. Um, of course, we'd pull down on it. So we'd put it in like this and we'd hang this on the drop tower and we would mount it to this hole. But this thing's over hundred pounds. This thing's super heavy. And it's also flexes because this is also heavy and so far away, this unit will bend and it looks kind of janky in videos. It's not super, um, it's not great. And um, yeah, so this needs to be improved on. And most of what I'm testing is not this big. And I think it's kind of funny, especially when I say it out loud, that smaller trad gear like this is not going to really do well in the same device that's testing number fives or even number sixes. So I think designing something that would be more uh, for size specific things might benefic be beneficial. This is my CAD mock-up. That's cardboard and duct tape. And what we have here is it's basically, you can see what it is. And I think that's just kind of awesome that we can look at the size, first of all. This thing is a quarter of the size of this thing. If this thing was like thick steel, I mean, obviously I would two hand it, but if I do that, I could mount it on that flange. And this, by the way, is only about 18 inches of C-channel. So if I got quarter inch thick C-channel and had that welded together, and then a, maybe a plate on the back, and that's all I would need in order to make this. It's actually a pretty simple design. Only about an eight inch by six inch plate. And our dimensions here are right there. Now, what's not in my design right here are bolts. So imagine a bolt going through here, pushing a plate that's on the inside. And the plate would just be on both sides here and there. Let me stick this up here so it's easier to see. So I'd have two plates on the inside and you would turn four bolts on this side, four bolts on this side, and it would push these plates in. And I'm assuming that I could taper it and that I could taper it any way I want. I'm not sure if I'm, if, maybe if the plate's free floating enough and I have some clearance to have a tilted plate. But anyways, those plates could get pushed all the way in and I'd be able to test something this big and there's nothing blocking me. Yeah, I have this, but this is on the outside. I don't have all thread going straight across in my way, like, like this. This doesn't help me maximize the use of this. Anyways, if the design of this is about three inches here and this cam is a number two C4 and about two and a half inches, by at the tallest point, about two and a half inches would do it. And the width is about two and a half inches. So it's very cubed in nature. And I could slip it in. And in fact, this is more like a number three. I know it's colored like a number four, but it's like a number three. I could actually get something like that in there. And you'd still, you can see there's plate, the plates, assuming that the plate is thin enough, like half inch on both sides each. And I'd be able to test these as well. I'm thinking this would need to be thinner because I don't think this is what should be holding the plates from falling out. I'm not quite sure what I'd want in order to keep the plate from being so free floating in there. I want the thing that keeps them going apart to be these bolts that are pushing against it. 
And shorter bolts, like thick, like three quarter inch bolts, wouldn't have any compression of any meaning. Like, I know there's a lot of pressure outward on a cam, but uh, the outward force I don't think is gonna overcome four three quarter inch bolts on either side. I wanna have the gap in here so I can see what's going on. I need to be able to film it. And I'm tempted to put an LED light up in there, maybe even just battery powered, just a little guy, something to give me a little bit more light for filming. But um, yeah, I don't know what to do about keeping the plates together. And when I do push them together, maybe maybe a, a nut, a bar, a spacer, but that's very limiting. It needs to be adjustable because I don't want a bar or a coupler nut or whatever for every possible size. Um, but as far as using this in the slack snap, the slow pull machine, if I had a flange here or something I could like bolt here and here, holding it this way or holding it that way, I could put the cam in and pull it over, over an edge. Now this thing's only so deep, right? So I can't put it all the way in and pull here, here, or here. I would probably want this to be taller if that's the case. And so then the C channel, if I was really trying to do the whole thing nice, I'd probably want to go nine inches or 11, but that starts to get this thing pretty tall. I need to be able to put this on whatever drop tower setup I'm doing. Um, and I don't want it to swing around too much. So maybe I could like, you can see here, we originally had it hanging, but then it kind of swings around a lot and it doesn't look as good. But then mounting this means I can't drop um, this attached to the load cell, right? Because I could hang this from the load cell, tear the load cell, and then when it rips out the cam, like it would feel the force. Like I'd be able to measure the force. Otherwise, I got to put a line scale three on the end of this and protect the, the line scale three when this thing falls and whips around. And that's one of the biggest cruxes with drop testing cams is like, man, just having even a bolt going through that right there, something simple. Um, as long as it's not, I don't know, too aggressive, that, that actually could work. But if I start to get this bigger and bigger and bigger or taller and taller and taller, that is, that's a problem. Because right now, if I push this all the way up, I'd be able to test up to this line right here. The other thing I could do for testing is um, angles. So I want to be able to put it in the machine like this, set the cam like this. If you were to place the cam in a crack and then fall on it in a different direction, what is that going to do? Now, this is a slow pull. I could also do that in the drop tower to where I'm not putting it in correctly or I put it straight in and then pull it. The other thing I could do is the flared thing to where only one lobe is engaged or partially engaged and it looks more like this. I could also tip it super tipped out or super over cammed. Um, as long as I have a lot of wiggle room with the plates, but I've seen in some brake test machine videos online where the plates just go and, and fall apart once they break. Actually, if I take this guy out, you can see that uh, the bolt that's holding this in is pretty loose. And this thing moves around a lot. And after a cam comes out, this thing jiggles, this thing's bouncing around. It doesn't look good. It needs to be pretty rigid or it doesn't really represent, at least to the audience, um, a solid rock that they'd be placing a piece of gear in. So love to hear your thoughts on, um, oh, and the plates, by the way. The plates would be probably like this thick, cut off here, four by six inches is uh, about what I would want in there. So a four inch plate would be right there, six inches, five and a half, maybe that way. And we would knurl this and have a machine shop knurl that to look like the end of a meat hammer. And uh, when I was at Black Diamond's lab, they had a knurled plate and that's actually what gripped the ultralights really well. I'll put that in the description below as well. So if I have a knurled plate, then I have uh, no risk of it slipping out. But if I wanna test which cams 
grip better because maybe this metal or the grooves they put on the metal uh, make a difference. I can actually get a, a rock like that thick, like a piece of granite or sandstone, a four by six piece, glue it permanently on either plate. And then I would have these different inserts that I would be able to slide in and move over. So I have to have enough room if the plate's really thick to get it in and then move it over, but also how to keep them from falling back out. I think that's the only you know, question I really have is how to keep them from coming out, but have all the flexibility I want to move them around. And if I do tighten this bolt right here, um, it pushing against that unevenly if it's cockeyed quite a bit or cockeyed. Uh, yeah, blow up the comment section. Tell me what you think. I'll put a bunch of links in the description for you. Cheers.